There are so many videos out there, but the missing piece for me is none of these videos actually explain how websites work and the different considerations you need to think about in order to decide what kind of website is right for you. This is what you need to know before you go and do yours. Who knows, maybe you'll decide that you don't even need one at all. Hey guys, it's Deborah, and welcome back to my channel where we talk about the business side of self-publishing. What you need to decide as a publishing business is what role your website is going to play in terms of engaging with customers and also in distributing your books. And that's why if you have a look at the websites of successful authors, you'll see that they're all doing different things. And that's because they all have slightly different strategies around how they engage with their fan base and also how they sell their books. The very first thing you need, even if you decide not to go through with getting a website, is a domain name. Every website on the internet has a specific physical address, which looks like this. This address is a unique identifier of the specific computer that has all of the files for that website on it. Because this is kind of hard to remember, we have domain names, which are unique, memorable addresses that we humans can easily understand in order to go to that same web server and request those same files. Domain names are basically an internet version of the pair box. You're not really buying one outright. For as long as you have leased that domain name, you can put all of the traffic on the internet to that particular website. But once that registration period lapses, you're going to need to keep renewing your domain name. There's usually some sort of grace period, but beyond this grace period, it can be really, really hard to get back a domain name because there's a whole industry out there called cyber squatting and they will swoop in, grab any domains that have recently expired and hold them hostage. Do you absolutely need a domain name? Well, no, like there are no absolutes about any of this, right? It just comes down to you and your business decisions. However, I would say that if you don't have your own domain name, there, there can be a perception that you're not as professional as other businesses or other self-published authors out there. And the thing with domain names is it's not expensive, right? Like there's a range of different top level domains, which are the things that come after the dot. And recently there's been a whole bunch of new top level domains that have come out on the market. And there's a whole bunch of debate out there about the fact that people still associate.com with like the most official thing or whether or not these other top level domains have like a negative connotation in terms of marketing branding and you know, all, all that stuff. I'm not gonna get into that, but it is something that you should be aware of when you're thinking about what domain name to get for your self-publishing business. Now let's talk about the other equation of a website. You either need to find a hosted solution or you need to find a web hosting service. Hosted solutions are kind of done for you web hosting where somebody else has gone through all of the hard work of configuring the web server, installing all the software that you're going to use on it, installing everything. And all you need to do is you literally just need to create an account and go in and you can start setting up your website. So if you are not confident with all of these other web technologies, for example, I would encourage you to look for a hosted solution, which can be very easy to get up and running um, within a day because a lot of these guys also offer pre-populated templates and things like that. There are so many kinds of web hosting out there, but for most people, shared or managed hosting is gonna be the right solution. Shared hosting means that the files for your website are co-located on the same physical web server as the file for a whole bunch of other websites. You can think of it as apartment living for websites. Managed web hosting is where your web hosting provider is going to manage a whole lot of the backend stuff about making sure that your web servers are secure and that they're up to date and all that kind of stuff for you. There are so many web hosting services out there that you're really gonna have your pick when it comes to choosing one. What I would recommend keeping in mind is the monthly cost for your web hosting. Some of these services are flat fee, so you pay X dollars a month and that's it, everything is included. Other web hosts will charge you by how much of the web server resources you consume. So if you have a more complicated website or you, if you have higher traffic to your website, then that's gonna cost you more money. The other thing to consider about a web host is how comfortable you are with their user interface. Many of them will use something called cPanel, which is a very popular web host service interface. Others will use something a little more custom. 
and still others will be very, very bare bones. If you're completely new to all of this, I would urge going for one that has a very intuitive user interface and that's very well documented so that if you run into any troubles, you can actually troubleshoot that relatively easy. If you do have the technical skills, however, I would urge you to think about doing one of these other web posts. Finally, the other thing to look out for from a web post is what they have in terms of support. If you are, again, new to all of this web posting thing, you're gonna want one that has high touch support. So look out for whether they offer things like phone support, live chat, or a very responsive ticketing system. If you are a bit more technical and you've been through this before, then again, I would urge you to have a look for web posts where they might tier that support because it can work out a lot cheaper. But be honest with yourself, if something does go wrong with your website, if your website goes down or your emails are playing hard and things like that, honestly, what is going to be the easiest solution for you? Broadly speaking, there are two kinds of content, static and dynamic. Static content is exactly what it sounds like. It doesn't change. Whereas dynamic content is content that can change depending on how a user interacts with a web browser. Websites are made of a couple of things. You've got the front end, which is comprised of everything that you see in your browser. And that's broken up into HTML, which has the structure and content of your website. So it defines things like headings versus paragraphs. It also contains things like images versus text. You've got CSS, which governs how your web browser displays your website. So these are what fonts to use, what font sizes to use, what font colors to use, things like that. You've also got an additional layer which makes your website interactive. So anything like a contact form or a mailing list sign up, all of those examples require additional code so that a user can input something and then your website can take that input and store it somewhere else. That's the front end. You then have the back end of the website, which is where all of the files are stored on your server plus the actual server itself. And if you have dynamic content, you also have what's known as a database. And this is where all of the individual pieces of content for your website are actually stored. All you need is a static page that tells people who you are and how to get in touch with you, what your books are and where to buy them, and a mailing list sign up. That's it. So if you're getting really worried about building a website and things like that, don't overcomplicate it. And the longest part of doing all of this is probably deciding on your domain name and also writing all of the copy that goes on your website. However, if your plan is to use your website for a lot of engagement, then you might want to invest in getting a website set up that's going to be able to cater for dynamic content. And that means looking at a content management system. A content management system is a piece of software that is installed on your server and it kind of sits between your server and the front end of your website. They're designed to let you make a lot of changes to your website very easy. WordPress is probably the most common example that people think about when they think content management systems. All of these content management systems work about the same. Once you've installed it, you can manage all of the content of your website by just logging in through a browser and then in the admin area, you kind of set up all your posts and everything, and then you post that, and then it's gonna handle all of the pushing out of your content to your website and updating all of the server files and the database and all of that stuff. Trying to do all of that on a static website is just a real, real pain in the backside. The main things you wanna consider when designing on a content management system is the extent of templates it's got and whether any of them are suitable for your use without a lot of fiddling around, how easy it is to use, and also the kinds of integrations that it's got. Integrations are basically extra pieces of code that let your website hook into other web services. So for example, a really popular integration that you probably wanna make sure your CMS has is the ability to integrate with whatever you're using to power your mailing list. And if you haven't thought about your mailing list, I encourage you to turn and watch this video here where I talk about the five different levels of a mailing list and what you need to make sure you have done for your launch day. And when it comes to e-commerce, you're really looking at three additional elements to add into your website. The first is your storefront, which is how people browse the different products that you're offering for sale on your website. The second part is the shopping cart, so the actual checkout process. And the final part is a payment processor. There are all kinds of options for how you go about doing e-commerce on your website. The Shopify is the big one. The other one is WooCommerce for WordPress installations if you're already using WordPress on your website. I currently use EC Wid on my particular website. If you're planning on adding a web store to your account, you are gonna be taking on the additional headache of logistics and fulfillment 
and shipping and all of that fun stuff. Uh, not to mention that you're gonna have to probably invest some money in inventory as well as all of the other packaging products and things like that that go along with shipping physical goods. If you're offering just e-goods, like there are actually some systems which can automate that process for you. So I highly recommend you consider that when you're picking your e-commerce provider. The final thing you might wanna consider adding to your website is if you're really using your website as a point of engagement with your readers, then you can think about adding something like a community slash fan forum to them. There's not a lot of authors I know of that do this personally, mainly because administering an online community kind of brings about like a whole different headache in itself. And there's also so many other venues of doing engagement with your readers and following um, elsewhere. Other authors tend to just sanction a fan community that's already in existence. What are you guys doing for author websites? And was there anything that you struggled with in particular? Let me know in the comments because I'd love to hear from you. Beyond just thinking about all these different things you can bolt on and add onto your website, at some point you may also need to consider some other pieces of web infrastructure. For example, a SSL certificate to make sure that your website is accessing things over a secure connection or things like Cloudflare, which are gonna make sure that your website stays up even in the event of a malicious attack. The thing to remember here is that websites can be as simple or as complex as you make them. So it's worthwhile spending some time upfront and really thinking about your strategy as an author on how you're gonna engage with your audience and also how you're going to actually sell your books. And the thing is you might be well served by just having a very simple virtual business card type of website because if your audience is mostly hanging out on TikTok or Instagram or Twitter or wherever and you're already active in those places, then it might not make much sense to try and go about doing all this extra work on the website just for the sake of trying to engage people there because trying to drive traffic to a website is a lot of work. You already have enough going on as a self-published author without creating more work for yourself. If you already have an email list and you're engaging people that way and you're already doing all of these extra content for it, you've got reader magnets going and things like that, you might simply be able to get away with registering a domain name and then using something like MailerLite, for example, where they give you an entire landing page that all is focused on driving newsletter signups. And that's already got everything you need. You can put author info there, you can put some basic info about where your books are at and all of that stuff. And you've got a nice big mailing list sign up form and you can actually just get going. If your readers are primarily finding you through Kindle Unlimited, for example, or in other places, then it may not be worth the hassle of going through and setting up an e-commerce website to try and sell direct to them. But if you're publishing in a niche like I am, where people are mainly finding you via word of mouth and things like that, then it can be worthwhile to set up an e-store because the margins on an e-store when you control all of that distribution chain is gonna be more profitable for you as an author. That's why it's all just gonna depend on what your strategy is as a self-published business in terms of what you do for your website. That's it for this video. If it was helpful, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell for more videos like this on the business side of self-publishing. See you guys in the comments. <laughs>